So, Frank Theroma, thank you very much. I think you made evidently clear what is wrong for the moment in the Internet of Things um, approach or thinking or um, how do you say aspirations and, and, and promises and and, um, and I think I also like that you proposed some sort of solution saying we can do and I also feel I got some homework right for Brussels. Um, now we come to our last speaker is um, Bruce. Bruce is starting off with one application example is the Casa Jasmina. And if I understand correctly, then you're a large on what does it mean for a home and domestic life. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Thank you. Um, it's been fun to see all of Transmediala this year. A uh, lot of keen awareness of algorithms and instrumentation and sensors this year. Um, and I, as I said before in this city a number of times, although people in Berlin talk in a very dark and critical way, it's very clear that you're a center of enlightenment now. Uh, these are dark times, but you're obviously doing better than pretty much anybody else. So you should take some satisfaction in your awareness and the strength of your institutions. And so, uh, you know, algorithms, espionage, surveillance marketing, metadata, meticulous personal profiles that you build with social media that you can't escape, smart cities, what fun it is to live in 2015. Uh, I don't want to engage in a political lecture here. I already did that. I wrote this critical book, Epic Struggle of the Internet of Things. People on the panel seem to be reading it. That's very gratifying. Let's all go buy the e-book. That's swell. Uh, that's not why I'm here. Um, so, you know, after having heard a lot about Internet of Things about a long time, it's, it's pretty clear to me that it's time to do something. I mean, the, if we accept that the Internet of Things is actually coming, why would we passively wait around for major Internet companies to sell it to us or for governments to impose it on us? That's really not very characteristic of the transmediala demographic. Uh, we've always had an alternative internet culture. So, you know, where's the alternative internet of things culture? And I suspect history is actually on our side. I mean, Apple was a counterculture company, very think different. Now it happens to be the world's most profitable corporation, one of its most powerful. And it's in the, the IoT space. It's, busy promoting and selling the Apple at home integrated Internet of Things domestic automation ecosystem solution. And you know, fine, they can do that. It's been a long time. They've been in business a long time. I use Apple equipment. You can see that. It's not like I married them. <laughs> they didn't promise me a golden ring in an Apple house <laughs> when I first bought an Apple IIe desktop computer decades ago. So if they can change uh, historically, so can everybody else, including the rest of them. We can think different from their different. They don't have a patent on different. Th those who live by disruption die by disruption. Whatever Apple did to IBM and AT&T can be done to Apple by other methods or to Facebook or Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Huawei, General Electric, Samsung, Siemens, or any other major Internet of Things player. History has not frozen just because we've got algorithm, the crowd, wireless broadband, and big data. So let's talk constructive alternative. And my lovely assistant, Yasmina, here will display exhibit one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> since, since this is an Internet of Things project, this is, of course, analog media, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> And our, our paper screen here is a derelict space in a former industrial foundry, a factory in glamorous Torino, Italia. This is a residence inside the factory of the Torino Fab Lab and the Arduino office, the open source electronics distribution office in Torino. So the ruins of the unsustainable are the 21st century's frontier. And next month, February 2015, we are reclaiming that rather large domestic space, and we are opening it as the world's first open source Internet of Things home. <clears throat> this used to be the home of the manager of a rather large Fiat automotive factory. 
Downstairs were big forges and heavy metal bending, and he lived upstairs. And as you can see from the plotter drawing there, it features a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, a laundry, a study, a hall, a patio, kids' room, several balconies. It was designed and built for the Turinese industrial elite of the 1920s. So even though it is inside a factory, it's a rather civilized and dignified domestic space. It's a private space inside a steel foundry. But it's a space where somebody with good taste and some intelligence might actually want to live, and that's what we like about it. Living in an Internet of Things home is going to be like that. It's like trying to live in a private home right next to a gigantic humming data foundry. Big data iron. And we postulate that if the Turinese of the 1920s could do that, the Turinese of the 2020s can also do it. So Yasmina will now give us exhibit two. So what are we trying to do in Casa Yasmina, as this space is called? Well, this is what everybody in Silicon Valley thinks you need to do now in the house of the future. They're Californians. They think you have to do every possible technical thing all at once in your home. This is the Gartner hype cycle. I'm a futurist. Of course, I get it about the Gartner hype cycle. Love them. We don't want all of that in a home. No. Our home is a refined and civilized Italian domestic space. We are Turinese. We treasure our quality of life. We eat slow food. We have the best wine in Europe. We even have curated grocery stores. We are Italians. We like artworks, poetry, shoes, clothing, designer furniture, elaborate kitchen gear. People around the world want to live like us. We do not ache to live like them. So downstairs in our factory, we have a design co-working space. We have 3D printers in there, laser cutters, heaps of every possible variety of electronic Arduino gear, even a big new industrial robot inside an iron safety cage. It's a, it's a factory for light digital manufacturing, but this is the upstairs. It's the domestic space. In the domestic space, we are interested in one central issue, open source luxury. <laughs> Luso open source, a life of luxury that emerges directly from makerspaces, hack labs, and from open source alternative electronics. Of course, that sounds like a contradiction. Open source, luxury. How can anything open source possibly be luxurious. That is why this is an Italian cultural opportunity. <laughs> Torino is a manufacturing city. It's also a city of luxury. This is a laboratory. It's about Italian luxury exports of open sourced digital network crafts. That is its purpose. The natural successor to made in Italy is make in Italy. So Casa Yasmina will be a place where we can collect and show and build some of these artifacts, and also a domestic laboratory where we can test new ideas about interaction and connection. And finally, it is a guest room, a guest hotel, for people who want to come to Torino and the Fab Lab and share knowledge. It's a place for our collaborators to stay and teach us and work. So hopefully we will make a lot of interesting mistakes with this project. And hopefully in Transmediala 18, when this project is over, people will not complain quite so much about the Internet of Things. Instead, we will have some interesting new ideas and projects and experiences and some living proof about what it's like to actually live with these technologies on our own terms. Now, in order to do that in Casa Yasmina, we're going to have to do some projects that deserve some attention. So I want to conclude by talking about three of our many future projects. And Yasmina will now distribute exhibit three here. This is a sketch of our household open source robot. <laughs> He's an open source 3D printable robot. He's, he's not quite this big. He's about the size of a small child. He should be arriving next month. And frankly, he's our mascot. He's the household pet. He's an open source luxury toy. So there are a lot of robots around nowadays, obviously. What's interesting about this robot? It's not that he's an open source robot from a 3D printer. 
The interesting thing is that he's Italian. <laughs> he's Turinese. We want to radically localize this robot. We want him to interact in ways that show that he is the most Turinese robot possible. Everybody's got 3D printers. Everybody's got motors, cables, electronics. Nobody has a Turinese robot. German robots are not from Berlin. Why is that? So these are our first efforts. These three drawings uh, are from yet another of our early projects, which is an open source wall plotter. And of course, everybody has seen plotters. They're very fast, very accurate, expensive commercial laser plotters. They draw very quickly on big sheets of paper. They're very accurate. That bores us. We want a very cheap, very big, open source domestic plotter that draws huge pictures very slowly in the house. <laughs> the Internet of Things is about transitions from digital to analog. We think they should be slow and thoughtful transitions. We don't quite know what to draw on the wall. Maybe you have some ideas. You can do it here now, Transmediala. Uh, you can send an, ish, uh, an image to Lorenzo Romagnoli, who is the Casa Yasmina general manager. He's in, he's in uh, Rasmina now. Here are the uh, addresses. We set this up about two hours ago. Um, you can uh, you know, just uh, put in this rather complicated address, and the other one is the live stream of what's going on inside the bear household. There's not a stick of furniture in the place. This is the first installation. You're the first people to have the chance to to look at it. Uh, it's a proof of concept. It's as crude and, uh, you know, as, and as, uh, 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 as prototypical as these other ones, but it's up. I mean, it's up and it seems to be running. So, you know, have at it. The Casa Yasmina wall plotter is slow. It is an interior domestic, domesticated street art device. And we're not an industry in the home. We're not an office. We're not in any hurry. It's our home, a home. If the plotter draws slowly, we're OK with that. We fully control the speed of the image on the plotter. It is not controlled by Facebook. It's not optimized. It doesn't have any particular purpose. The wall plotter is very Brian Eno. <laughs> it's very calm. It's ambient in there. You can't rush us by pushing the data at us, no. Feel free to contribute. Don't expect any instant response. We don't much care who you are. We're not archiving the pictures. We do not data mine them. We will not trace them back to you. Once they're erased from the wall of the home, they're gone forever. <laughs> Thank you, Yasmina. Yasmina of Casa Yasmina. Uh, and then there is the third major issue, which is net.art. OK, I am the curator of Casa Yasmina. That is my job. Y Yasmina here is our hostess. We go to Transmedia all in Berlin. We're always showing up here. We totally get it about Internet of Art and all its crappy, complicated, theoretical art world economic issues. We need art in our Internet of Things home. You can bet we don't want any boring and conventional sophisized oil paintings. <laughs> no. No, we want domestic internet art designed for the home. We want internet of things art. We'd rather prefer it to be open source art, too. Open source, internet of things, cultural expression for the home. Luxurious open source, internet of things, cultural expression for the home. Why? so that when house guests arrive, they will feel elevated, <laughs> enlightened, even vaguely humiliated by our good taste. <laughs> Obviously, that's what art in the domestic home is for. <laughs> the transmediala issue is how to do it. OK, we get it about net.art, website art, app art, browser art, game engine art, interactive art, conceptual intervention art, 3D printed sculpture, scound art, glitch art, GIF art, GIF art, new media art, augmented reality, totally dote on that. QR codes, we could tolerate them even though they're hideous. Really, we can forgive you people anything. However, although we love all of that, none of that cultural material has ever been made to work within a domestic context. 
It can be in the home office or in the desktop or on the laptop or even on the mobile handheld, but never in the home per se. So what does that look like? I mean, what, more to the point, what should that look like? I mean, how should that be made to work from the artist's perspective? Should we commission some work for our model home? I'm open to that prospect, being the curator. Should we buy electronic artwork from the likes of S Edition, where they sell digital rights to screen displays? That's a little weird. Conventional artists seem to like it. It's one of the biggest electronic art scenes there. At least they get paid there. That's sort of good. I don't mind that. Maybe we could curate a display channel for our home on some arty social medium, something not quite so censorious and creepy as Facebook. For instance, uh, maybe Vimeo or Ello or Tumblr or New Hive. It's an important question now because it's the right time to ask the questions. Will an Internet of Things home, as sold and controlled by Apple at home, or Google Nest, or Microsoft Cortona, or Amazon Alexa, will it have any internet art in it? Obviously, they'll be very eager to retail digital rights management, movies, and pop music. You can see them already drooling at the idea of doing that and meticulously tracking your purchases and your tastes. They're also keen to slam the door on any intrusions into their vertically integrated stack data streams. But what about the exploratory, inventive, and critical artwork that people in this room actually find interesting? <laughs> that needs a home, am I right? And our project in Torino is to invent the home in which it properly belongs. So our last exhibit was this sheet of paper. That's our research project. If we knew all the answers now, it wouldn't be research. The future is unwritten. The future is unplotted. Thank you for your attention.